Hey guys, it's Aaron from eugamehost.com and I'm just going to be showing you quickly how to use our new Path Firewall interface. So before we get started, if you've set up a firewall before on our old path, path, uh, on our old path management system, there's nothing you need to do. All the rules are going to be imported, um, there'll be no disruption to your networking, this is purely a means to interact with the Path Firewall. So you're no longer going to see a service here either that says DDoS Manager, that's gone. Um, it was a bad way of doing it, it wasn't automatic, um, and it was overly complex. So the way of doing it now is you're going to come up to Services up here, and you're going to select Path Firewall. Now the benefit of this is it means you can manage your services separately, so you won't have a big block of all the IPs of all the services you have. So you can view, for example, if you've got UK VPS 1 here with two IPs assigned, when you click Manage Rules here, you will just see the IPs for UK VPS 1 and so on, you know, UK VPS 2 and whatnot. So in this case, we're going to manage our UK VPS 1, and then we will see all the IPs we have assigned to that VPS. So in this case, we have one IP assigned, and we have one existing rule that's been imported automatically from Path. Now, this works exactly the same as the old one in managing it. So we're just going to click X here just to delete this one, and then I'm going to quickly show you how to remake an RDP rule, because that's, well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, so we're going to click New Rule, and uh, we're going to go up here and we're going to select protocols and we will select TCP. That's because it's RDP um, and it uses the TCP protocol. So we're going to go to destination port and we're going to type 3389. That's the default RDP port that we're using for this example. And we're just going to call it RDP. We're then going to come here and click create. To note, we do still allow you to edit these source ports. Again, you very, very rarely want to edit the source ports. It's why it's now hidden by default. Um, a lot of people were getting confused and they were you know, they were putting the destination port in the source port as well, and it would break it. Um, so it's just, it's hidden by default now. So you really don't need to worry about that. Leave that disabled unless you know you need it for whatever reason. So it's going to click create here. It's going to make the rules. It's going to take 15 to 30 minutes to apply. It can be longer at times. If, if it takes up to 45, 60 minutes at times, it, that is perfectly normal. Um, that is just, just how it is sometimes with applying uh, rules to the edge of the network. So then we're going to go to filters and we're going to apply the TCP symmetric filter to our RDP port that we've just opened. So this will load up all of the filters. While that's loading, and we'll just explain, you can of course still apply rate limits, rules, filters, and of course view the attack history of uh, your services. Again, any IPs assigned to this particular VPS will show here, and any IPs assigned to your other services will show separately, which allows you to better manage them. So we're going to come in here. Again, we can see there's already a TCP filter applied to this, but we're going to delete it and we're going to remake it. Just so I can show you how we do it. So filters, we're going to go and select filter here. We're going to press T to go to the TCP symmetric section. We're going to go for 3389 and we're going to set that to a per connection limit of 150 PPS. That should be fine for RDP. Um, that will now again apply. I think I just clicked cancel by mistake. I did. Okay, cool. So we'll now click create instead. That'd be the correct one to click. And uh, that will uh, now apply. There we go. That's now applied. So that again, that will propagate over the network. Um, but yeah, it is that simple. It's a very simple tool. It's more simple than the other one. We do have a lot of updates coming for this. We're going to be adding automatic options. Um, for example, if you've got a Rust server, we're going to be setting it up so you can apply a default filters for your Rust server, i.e. open all of the basic standard ports for that. We will do the same for web server, open VPN, anything like that. Anything we can simplify, we will do. Um, but that's all coming in the next few weeks. We are currently working on our reseller version of this as well, which is just an API to interact so we can give our reseller, reseller clients WHMCS access to this also. But for the uh, average user, this is all you need and this is all you need to know. Um, but any questions or help, just raise a ticket. We're here to help. Um, the migration should be seamless. It's automatic. There's nothing you need to do. There's no concern. Um, but yeah, I hope this helps anyone who's unsure how to use the new one.